Are you looking for an easy way to deploy your machine learning models written in R? If yes, then this is the right video for you. Hi, my name is Sascha. Welcome to this channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, start now by subscribing to this channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you don't miss anything. I'm regularly asked by my customers how they could roll out their machine learning models written in R to production as web APIs. And of course there are multiple ways to do this. In this video I'd like to give you three simple ways to achieve this goal. Without further ado, let's dig into the first option. So the first option I found is Plumber. Plumber is a neat little framework to put a web API in front of R packages or in front of R code in general. So as you can see on the web page, you just create some functions, return some values in the end, and you're decorating that function with some additional information that this is, for example, a get verb of a REST API. It's listening to the slash echo. It's expecting a parameter called MSG, so for the messages, or for example, it's delivering a PNG as a response type. It's again a get verb of the REST API and it's listening to slash plot. And I can use that to also run my R script or my R model as an API in, for example, a Docker container. So let's have a look how that can be set up in RStudio. So first of all, I'm creating a logistic regression model. I'm using MT cars for that. As you can see, some values in there, I think 32 car values. If, if I'm looking what exactly is in that data set, I see that it's motor trend car road tests, and I see the schema of that data set. And I can also have a look at the summary, for example, to see that there are different values in there with min, max, the first quadrant, and so on and so on. So I'm just using that to generate a model, which is in the end predicting based on the weight of the car and the horsepower, if this is an automatic or a manual transition car. So let's create that model. Let's check for the manual transmission. So just create a function and execute that function with 120 horsepowers and uh, 2.8 thousand pounds of the car. So that's a 64% probability that this is a manual transmission. And I can also save that model as a file. So car minus model RDS. So after I created that, I then need some kind of functions which I want to host with Plumber. So let's have a look with my API. First of all, I'm reading that RDS file back into memory. So I've got my model back. Then I specified several functions to define several plots. So first of all, a histogram of the cross horsepower, then a histogram of the manual transmission, a histogram of the weight. And last but not least, I specified a function which is in the end creating a new data set based on the horsepower and the weight I transferred to that function and then just calls the predict method and delivers the results back. Hosting that into Plumber is also easy. First of all, I need to install Plumber. I'm using JSON Lite to transfer the data. And after I loaded both packages, I can define an API based on my R script. I can also generate a Swagger file, for example, and store that. And I can use that Swagger file to give it to my developers who are able to create an API out of that. And I can also make a test run. So I got a small browser window in here and I can call, for example, the get method of the first plot, which gives my plot back. Or for example, executing the manual transmission method with 2.8 thousand pounds and 120 cross horsepower, execute that, and then I get a 0 0.6418 back. So let's close that. Next step would be creating, for example, a Docker file to host that whole API. I did that already, so let's have a look at the Docker file. The Plumber project also provides an already publicly available Docker base file. So I'm using that base file. I'm just copying my RDS file into my container, of course, my R script, and then I'm just hosting the Plumber R package. So it's just used as a parameter of that whole execution mechanism. So what I did to deploy that, 
I created a small script and added all those source codes and scripts also to my GitHub repo and put a link into the description so you can check everything I create here. And I'm just creating a private Docker registry into Azure to, to host that thing. Then I'm executing a build process to build that in the cloud. I could also do that with Docker build locally. And then I'm downloading that to my local Docker registry. And then I'm also creating an Azure container instance, so fully blown API, which I can use in Azure. So let's execute that. And that can, of course, be easily done completely locally in the cloud, wherever Docker is available in the end. And I created already an Azure container instance to make it available to test that whole thing. So for example, I could use a curl command specify my parameters. And then of course, at the endpoint of my Azure container instance, I can just copy that from there. And the container is listening on port 8000. And of course, I need to specify the right path. And again, it returns the 64.18% probability back. And last but not least, I can of course also use that in my browser to, for example, request the histogram out of that plot function. So that's option one to easily generate an API out of R scripts, or in this case, deploy my R based machine learning model into a Docker container and in my case into the cloud. A second option, which is also a pretty hybrid option, provides a lot more functionality like user management, like providing versions and so on, is using Microsoft Machine Learning Server that is a standalone product originally developed by Revolution Analytics and acquired by Microsoft a couple of years ago. And the current version is 9.47. So I already created a virtual machine, installed that on there and made it up and running. And I'm going to provide further links to the source code I use, to the scripts I use to set up that server and to the documentation of the machine learning server in the comment section of that video. So let's move back to our studio. And I created already a script to do that. First of all, I need to reference the Microsoft R server deploy library. I'm loading my model, which I generated. Then again, I'm just testing if everything works fine. So let's load that, execute that method or that function that works fine. And I'm then just creating a small method to secure my secrets and just connect to a remote login to that external VM, to that server. Again, that works fine. And I specify a name of that service and deploy that service, which is done by the publish command, the name of the service, the function I want to deploy, the model, which is part of that function. And then I'm specifying input and output parameters and a version of my model. Let's execute that. Great, that's deployed. And I get that API back and I can see what capabilities that API provides, like uh, calling the transmission method, giving the capabilities a print function and so on. So I get all those things. I can also do batch processing and I'm trying that function to call that the manual transmission, deliver the results back, just print the answer of the API. And again, this is a little bit more precise, but it's a 64.18% of the precision. And again, I can get a Swagger file for that API and for example, store that in a file. And since this server contains several of those APIs, I can, for example, list all those APIs with all the information. I can also create a multi-cluster system at the back end, so way more capabilities. If I really need those functionalities, I can do that with that server. And let's have a quick look at that Swagger file. This is just a JSON file describing the whole service with all the functionalities. Since I've got now a user management in there, I need, I've got a login, for example, and response type and so on. So I get all those informations. And what I did already, I used Visual Studio to create a small application to test everything. So I specified all the configurations into two static files. And out of that Swagger file, I automatically generated some additional C Sharp classes, which encapsulate the whole API, provide me all the functionalities of that API. And then I created just a small console application to test everything. 
This contains primary two things. First of all, the plumber option. So I'm using just a normal HTTP client, creating my values or storing that in, in a dictionary, add that to a form and just executing that as the post command, get the values back, converting them back and deserialize that so you can view everything. I can also do the same thing with the machine learning server. In the end, I first have to log into that server. So I'm doing a basic authentication with the username and password. That server provides also, also Kerberos, Active Directory integration, uh, authentication and, and other things. And then I'm using that token, which I got back from the server to again, authenticate against that server and just call the client dot manual transmission async method to get those values back. In the end, I'm just calling those two APIs and let's test that small program. And as you can see, Plumber delivers the 64.18% back and the machine learning server is a little bit more precise in the float value and delivers pretty much the same value back with a little bit more digits, more precision. So that was option two, so using the machine learning server. The third option I would like to show you is using SQL Server because SQL Server since SQL Server 2016 and as well as the Azure SQL database, so also the PaaS offering in the cloud provides the functionality to also do an in-database usage of R scripts as well as Python scripts. So I created a small SQL based notebook and connected already to an Azure SQL database which has the R functionality enabled. Currently there are no tables. So let's first create a small table which contains exactly the same data I'm using in here. And often you're looking for some test data to play around with features and so on. And that's an easy way if you have already test data in R packages like the empty cars, I can ex exactly use that functionality built into the SQL server to, for example, generate data and store that in a SQL database or in the end in a SQL table. So what I did in here, I'm just using the stored procedure execute external script. I'm specifying the R interpreter, so the R language to be used. Then I'm specifying my script. In my case, it's just please give me that data set back, transfer that to this data set. And I want to have that as an output. So this is the data set, which is the result of that sort of procedure. And I'm pushing the result into a table. So let's execute that. And this is using under the hood, the R interpreter to in the end store my 32 rows into my table. So if I refresh my table now, there's my table. And let's select the first 1000 rows. And as you can see, the values are now stored in that table. Up next, I'm creating a small stored procedure, which is doing nothing else than generating a model. So again, I'm using the GML function to create a logistic machine learning model. I'm storing that model into that variable, serializing that model into a binary code in the end and delivering that thing back. And to be able to train that model, I'm using this as an input data set. And this is more or less pushed from the outside or generated from the outside. So I'm transferring from my SQL database the data into that script. I'm specifying the name of the data sets which will be used. And then I can also transfer further parameters. And I'm using in this case three output parameters one for the model name, one for the model version, and one for the binary, so the real model. So let's execute that. Now I've got that stored procedure. I also could use, for example, a more scalable version. So using the R client, the special versions which come with the Revo scale R library. And for example, do the same thing just on a more scalable base. So I'm creating a second stored procedure, which is exactly using that method. And after that, I'm creating a table to store my models because I can just use the binaries which are generated by the first two stored procedures and just store them as a var binary column into my table. So I've got now my second table. And if you have a look in here, this is currently completely empty. I'm using that just to store my models in a minute. So let's execute that with the first stored procedure. And as you can see, this is really providing all the standard out messages of, of that model. So transferring everything and in the end, store 
my model into my table. I'm doing exactly the same thing with the second stored procedure. And again, this stored the model in the table as well. So if I query that table again, now I've got my two manual transmission models in there, version one, version two, which is in the end just the two different algorithms. The first one is using the standard RGLM function and the second one from the real scale R library. So I've got two different models in the end in here. Last but not least, I can predict that by using SQL code again. In the end, what I'm doing in here, I'm again using the execute external script function, specifying that I have R code in here, unserializing the binary stored model back into an object and just use that object with a predict method. And as parameters, I'm of course transferring my var binary information. So my model in here, as well as the two parameters, as well as an output parameter, the probability. So let's execute that to generate that. And then I can use that to, for example, get the manual transmission probability back. And last but not least, I can also use native scoring. So I don't have to use such a sort of procedure. I don't have to write code. I'm just reading the binary of that model back out of that table. And then I can use the predict keyword in the normal T-SQL language, specifying the model and either specify a whole table or a select statement in here. And of course, I have to specify in my case, because I'm doing a batch prediction, I have to specify the column which will store the predicted values, so executing that. And as you can see, for every value in here, I get the probability if this is a manual transmission car or not. So that's the third option. And there's definitely more. I'm also interested in any kind of experiences you are having in this area. So please use the comment section below and share them with us. And if you'd like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And I've also put some more videos on similar topics in this area. So please check them out and see you soon.